Believe it or not, this beautiful truck is a 96 Toyota T100. You might not know what the heck a T100 is, so I'm going to tell you. Toyota decided in the 90s they were going to make bigger trucks. Instead of just their little bitty trucks, they're going to make bigger trucks. Not as big as F-150s, but a lot bigger than their previous versions. So they decided in Japan only to make these T100s. They're all made in Japan, but strangely enough, they never sold them in Japan. It was for the US market, but they're all made in Japan. This guy picked this one up pretty cheap, and he's had the bodywork all done over. Now you can see on the sticker here, it says a 97, but this, these parts are from a different vehicle. <laughs> the vehicle itself is a 96. The regular VIN number will show you that. That's the real one that belongs on a truck. Now after making these things about five years, they decided we're gonna go even bigger and we're gonna make T-150s. Well, guess what happened? Ford Motor Company sued them and said, you can't call them T-150s. We have F-150s. Like, wait a second. T's and F's are different letters, right? Uh, how the heck could you say you own the rights to the number 150? Doesn't make any sense at all all right i mean you see 1500s this 1500s that from different companies why they couldn't but they didn't like it toyota didn't want to make a big stink so instead they called them toyota tundras instead of t-150 now this was the first big size one the t-100 all made in japan the t-150s are as you know them the tundras they're all made in the united states these t-100s basically came in two styles you could get a four cylinder or a six now this is a six so i'll open it up and you can see, got a 3400 4 cam V6 engine. These are extremely, extremely reliable engines. You can see, he's had a timing belt changed in 2008. And now it's 237,000 miles on it. It doesn't burn any oil. Now, if you are looking at one of these and you want a configuration like this, this is a four-wheel drive one. You really want to get the V6 engine. They did make them with four-cylinder engines. They're just a little bit too underpowered. This one is perfectly fine. It's not a race truck, but you're not going to get stuck with a four-wheel drive. These engines can basically run forever. And you can see it's still got the original power steering pump and the original air conditioning compressor and yes, it still blows cold. It's a Toyota. That's why they decided to make these trucks. In Japan, they're not big on pickup trucks and neither were they in Europe. They made these exclusively for the American market. Now really, they're not competing against Ford, GM, Dodge, the Tundras, until they went last year to the stupid V6 twin turbo, when they had the V8 engines and the Tundras, they were on beatable trucks. Now with that V6 and the turbo, I've seen problems with them. I don't like them, but the old ones, they would just run forever. Toyota didn't care about keeping up with all the bells and whistles and superficial plastic hoopla that Dodge and Ram and GM and Ford is always, who's got the bigger tailgate? Who's got a tailgate that does 57,000 things, right? No, they just made solid, reliable trucks that could run forever, and this is obviously one of them. Now, I lived in Massachusetts his whole life, so as I said, all this stuff was rotten off. So he's had all this replaced with used parts from around the world. Now, if you know a lot about these things, you'll notice this is a little bit shorter bed than you're normally going to see. Well, it's because it came from another truck. <laughs> and it was put on this truck because the other one was all rotten off. But as we look under, we will see. Check it out. This frame is rock solid. Now, he's had it all clean and weatherproof, so it won't rot anymore. But... This is a 1996. This was a long time before Toyota trucks had had rotten frame. My son had a Tacoma, it had a rotten frame. A lot of people have brought me Tacomas and Tundras. It did have some rotten frames. The salt would eat them up. For some reason, Toyota originally put a pretty good coating on it. But then, for a few years, they did a crappy job coating it. They used the wrong kind of coating. I don't know. Maybe they tried something new and it didn't work. And a lot of the frames rotted. This thing is rock solid. Normally, you're not going to have to worry about a 96 having a rotten frame. Oh, he's going there to check, but you can hear this thing is rock solid. The reason that the other parts had to be replaced because the fenders and stuff were all bashed in, then they rust, and that's a lot thinner, not coated as well as the frame. The frame's what you worry about. As he found, you can get parts for these things all over the place. It's a Toyota. He went all over the place, got that nice little top for it too, used for 500 bucks. And interesting enough, it's just tall enough that he can get his four-wheeler in there. And he said, they don't leak. It's totally sealed and it doesn't leak when it rains. He did buy fancy wheels and fancy tires because hey he's turned this old truck into a really nice truck now he's got these big wheels 
It's four wheel drive. It's got a big V6 engine. He says he gets between 10 and 13 miles a gallon. 13 on a good day. You're thinking about getting bigger tires, loading your truck up, just realize gas mileage is gonna go down. This aggressive tire pattern, you're not gonna get stuck, especially with four wheel drive, but all that tire equals all that friction. All that friction equals crappier gas mileage. <laughs> So, realize that. I mean, it's a nice truck. It's going to get bad gas mileage. That's just how they work. And the funny thing is, one of the reasons Toyota went to their Tundra being V6 with twin turbos, because they said, well, we got to do something about that gas mileage, right? Well, a friend of mine bought one of those brand new Tundras last year in Tennessee. You know what he told me? He said, I'm going to get rid of this truck because it gets horrendous gas mileage. He used it to tow his business, which is like a taco stand, right? So he spent all that money on a brand new Tundra that had the V6 twin turbo that they say gets great gas mileage. He actually got worse gas mileage than he was getting with this old V8. Because when you're pulling weight, you need a lot of torque. So he bought this nice truck. He loved the look of the truck, but he said the gas mileage is horrible on the thing. And Toyota said, oh, there's nothing we can do. We looked at it. It's fine. They don't get the rating that they say they do when they're towing, just like the B of Ford and their F-150 Lightning Electric pickup where they say, oh, it can go 200 something miles. Yeah, I saw a guy tow his boat 90 miles and he was almost completely out of electricity. So don't listen to any of those ratings. You need to tow, to pull. You want a big V8 engine, right? And in this case, these never came with V8s. It's the T100. The T150s that they actually never produced but called them Tundras. They came with V6s in the beginning and V8s. Then eventually they were all V8s and then now they went back to V6s which as far as I'm concerned is a mistake for a big truck. They didn't screw up on this one. It's a 96 and it still runs like a clock. We'll start it up. Okay. 236,000 miles. The only thing I hear is a little bit of cam noise. You're always going to hear a little bit of cam noise on an engine with that kind of mileage. Doesn't burn oil, runs perfectly fine. He changes the oil regularly, takes care of it. These things can last forever. Now we'll see if it makes a liar out of me as I hook up the scan tool. Now I'm trying out this new X tool scan tool. They gave me one before and it had a lot of problems and they admitted they had bad software. So here's a new one with upgraded software. That thing's called IP. 819 TPMS Diagnostic System. And here we go. It's ramping itself up. Now this is an old, it's a 96. We're gonna have to do it manually. Put the dead in manually because it's too old. There's no auto reader that's gonna read something this old. Communicating, it's gonna be pretty slow. These old vehicles are a lot slower. The computers are much slower than the modern ones, but they still should give us some decent data. You can see by the flashing green light, it's working, it's sending information out. It's only 66% done now, but it's old and slow, just like me. While we're waiting for the slow communication, check out this little garbage can. It's cool. Look, push. And guess what? It won't communicate. It fails to communicate. So I have to say this X tool, it fails. I tried it earlier on my wife's matrix and it wouldn't work on that. They said they'd fix the software and I tried it and it did communicate. So they did fix that software, but this is the second vehicle I used at it. Now this one, it won't read it. So I would stay far away from this particular tool until they perfect it. It's too much beta software that doesn't operate. It went the whole way through the whole system and then it says fails to communicate. So we'll get something better. We'll get an oldie that I know is gonna work. So I get my dirty old Nova. You can see paints on and everything, but let's plug this baby in. I'll do the same part, lit up, and you can see this is auto linking, so we will do. This is any trouble codes. Now checking out the data. We'll start her up. And you can see no powertrain, DTCs, or freeze frame data. It doesn't have any trouble codes. And now we'll look at live data. We'll start her up. Check it out. Short term fuel trim is 0%. Okay, as you can see, this thing's got 236,000. 276 miles on it, and the short term fuel term is zero, meaning it's running perfectly. <laughs> Ignition timing's good, the airflow sensor's good. Ooh, the short term fuel term went to 0 0.8. So it's going between zero, 0, 0.8. Every once in a while, it bounces to minus two. It's still hardly nothing on a vehicle this old. Close the hood. Take it for a spin. The four wheel drive system is all manual. No electronic crap, you pull it in gear. Of course, there's no backup camera, but hey. It's a pickup truck. Now he did go a little bit too big on the tires because you can hear them. They're rubbing a little. Sometimes you put two big tires on, you're gonna rub when you do a big turn. So I'll try to keep away from doing big turns here. 
<laughs> it's a truck, so it's certainly going to go over my bump here relatively easily. And away we go. Four-wheel drive, nice and high up in the air. It is an old truck. It's a 96, right? It's got a solid frame. Now, of course, it's not going to be the smoothest riding thing in the world. It's an old truck. <laughs> and it's lifted and it has gigantic tires in it too so it still runs perfectly fine but it's not going to be smooth riding like the more modern ones are we come out to deal with friday afternoon traffic here we go we'll look around and here comes friday traffic everybody in newport gets off early on friday they're rushing to get a drink or something look at them all but it looks like there's an opening so here we go We'll step on it. That engine still hums. Did you see that smooth shift? This thing may have 236,000 miles on it. Still shifts like a dream. Engine still got about the same power it had in the beginning. Mind you, this is kind of a Frankenstein truck because like I said, it's got a different bed on the back, different side. It's even got a somewhat different cab on it too because <laughs> a lot of the stuff had rusted up. Hit being hit and assault on the road eating up, but it did not touch the frame, like I said. The frame's still solid as can be. And he was smart. He had it all cleaned off and then coated and rubberized so it won't rot in the future. Okay, it's got all this mileage, but how does it idle? Well, there's a V6 that's still smooth. Extremely smooth. Film in one hand, so I don't want to corner too fast. Plus, that tire will rub some because he's got a little bit too big tires on it. You can see. He's having his own little camera here, so he can see front and back. There it is. You can easily add this stuff yourself. Why buy another vehicle when you can buy a camera? It was Toyota's first attempt at making a bigger truck. And considering that this 96 is still running like a clock, I'd say that they did a pretty good job the first time. Okay, here we have an interesting thing. It's a Chevy Avalanche. God just bought it for four grand. It's only got 100,000 miles and check it out. It's a German avalanche. Look at this. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? <laughs> well, at least the license plate's from Germany. These are interesting trucks. Shame they don't make them anymore. A lot of people like short beds. It's got a long bed too. Check it out. Right here, you're gonna see something cool. The seat's up and you flip the seats down. Then you remove the glass. Yes, the glass is removable. Clips down. Has a little place it fits into. They thought of everything. And down it comes. Now you got a long bed. Look at that. Now you got all kinds of room. Pretty interesting idea. And since it's all plastic, you don't have to worry about it all rotting away. Hey, that was a pretty good idea. Now we only paid four grand for it used, and it's actually in pretty good shape. We look under the hood, got the classic V8 engine in it, automatic transmission. This particular one is four wheel drive. It's got a little over 100,000 miles, doesn't burn oil. These are very good engines. And the thing about it is, he's worried about the transmission because he's heard bad things about them. Still working okay now, but there's so many of these things out there. For example, the Suburbans, Taos, Denali's. Matter of fact, his back seats are leather now. He got them in a junkyard for 60 bucks and they're in pretty good shape. There's a lot of stuff that'll fit these things. As we go inside, it's a typical Chevy truck. Sounds solid. Got all the usual gauges, speedometer, tachometer, temperature, water temperature, oil pressure. Pretty well set up and you can see. You got a lot of space to put stuff in with that dropping back. This started in New York State. So, the bell is certainly tolling for it in terms of rust. They will rust. There's a little rust here, but when we go around, you can see in here, there's quite a bit of rust. Somebody's put some tape and stuff on it, but he said the only thing holding this on is a bungee cord, otherwise the plastic all flop out and you can see it rotting here. As we climb under, there's a lot of superficial rust, but the frame itself, it's still rock solid. They put pretty good frames on these things. The only problem is you'll find all the ancillary things like these torsion bar mounts and shocks. All that stuff's eventually going to have to be replaced if you drive it too long. Because eventually 
all that bare metal is going to break off piece by piece. But, as I told the owner, since they fit so many different vehicle parts, contact some southern junkyards and get parts from them. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that'll fit this. Now you can see the spare tire's long gone. <laughs> There's nothing there but the little crazy rod that they have that hold them on. Those always break anyways. And you can see the wheels are pitted from the salt in the winter. But you can always do them over if you want to. So let's start up, see what it sounds like. Change engine oil, it's telling us to change the engine oil. Now it sounds like a typical V8. Doesn't burn any oil. And you're always gonna see superficial corrosion up north. All the aluminum parts, they're gonna corrode. Doesn't mean anything. As long as it's not riding through, just superficial rough. Now we're gonna run my John Scan tool on to check it out. He's worried about transmission problems, so we'll check that all. But even if it went out, there's so many of them out here. They can be rebuilt so easily, it's not that big of a deal if it finally did go out on you to just have it repaired or replaced. Here we have his communicating auto diagnose, and here we go. Doing this thing, and the AC still works. I'm gonna turn it off, it's cold enough, we don't need any more. It's got a sliding sunroof too. The cloth seats in the front, but he put leather seats in the back that are folded down now. Cause he got them, like I said, for 60 bucks in a junkyard. So far so good, everything is green. One more system to do, it's green so far. Everything's green. So now let's just look at some data. Well, since there's no trouble codes, We'll look at live data. It's older, so it's kind of slow. It'll take a little while to get the information. And here we go. We'll start looking at the data. Color coded. There's no bad codes. Not bad for 100,000 miles. The short term fuel term bank one is zero. And on bank two, it's zero. Now it's two. Not much difference. Now it's four. It moves around a little bit. But that's the short term. Now, long term is 21%. In the long term, it's adding quite a bit of fuel, so it's running somewhat lean. Now, that's no surprise. He recently got it. Probably needs to be driven out, the carbon blown out of the engine. So, we're going to try Bernie's fuel cleaner in this and take it for a spin. See if it makes the fuel trim come closer to zero instead of having to add a bunch of fuel. The fuel injectors could be clogged up. Typical on these Vortex systems, they will do that as they age, especially if they sit a lot, and this seems to have sat for quite some time before... He bought the thing. We'll go further down. That looks good. Now we'll look at some more data. We'll go into the fuel trim more. Short term is fine, but the long term, it's adding 21% fuel. So we're going to put some cleaner in. Take it for a spin. Before we do that, we'll look at some transmission data. All black. That's good. This hasn't gone too far to trip any codes or to show that there's a problem. So we we'll get Bernie's cleaner here. Pour it in and we'll take it for a spin. Pour the whole thing in. He's a man who takes after me. This cup falling, falling in, so he put a couple of wood screws in it. Hey, right? it doesn't fold in anymore. Perfectly fine, you know. <laughs> Look, it's already starting to go down. It's at 17 now. It's down to 14 now. Down to 15 now. Okay, so what did we learn? You can still get a decent truck for four grand. The cleaner's already making it get more towards zero already. From 20s down to 15. It'll probably get better as time goes on. This is just a short trip, right? Now, don't go out and think, you're gonna throw cleaner and everything, it'll fix everything. I don't use cleaner in my own cars because I don't have any problems. I clean the oil right, but it made sense here. We don't know how long this thing sat, what kind of shape the injectors were in, and it's doing its thing. Don't think, oh, I gotta buy this stuff and stick it in every time I fill up with gas. No, you're throwing your money away then. You wanna do it when you got a problem. Something like this that might have sat for a long time. Let's fix the problem. The Ford Granny's got a pretty cool little truck that runs like a top now, and it's a Chevy, so it gets bad gas mileage. That's just the way a V8 engine goes. You can't have everything, right? But. He can pull stuff with it. He put a different hitch because the old hitch was all rotten away. And he got a great truck for four grand with only 100,000 miles. The Ridge Line is very popular amongst people who are looking for a pickup truck like this, especially Honda owners. Now, this is an earlier Ridge Line. It's an 06. It's still running, so it's on the test of time. Uh, the early ones, they were made in Canada. So, this is a Canadian Honda pickup truck. Right there, it's a little bit on the odd side. And Honda themselves admitted they built these things mainly for Honda owners. The 18% of Honda owners who wanted to pick up, they wanted to be able to have Hondas in the driveway and in the garage that were just all Honda products. So 
they made the ridge line. You can see they've all got a short bed on them. They're not a giant long pickup truck. They come in two wheel drive and four wheel drive. In this case, it was four wheel drive because he lived in New York and he had it in college when he went to UB. Same place my wife graduated from. And you can see, yeah, the fender's rusting here and that's from New York salt on the road. The ones I saw when I was in Texas, they didn't have any rust on them. But the early ones, they weren't salt coated very well for anti-rust and they will rust. You wanna check them out if you're looking at a used one. But on the other hand, when we go under this thing, trailer hitch is rusty. Well, we'll check the undercarriage. And even though it's got superficial rust, hey, it's still got a nice solid frame to it. Now for a pickup truck, got a lot of room in the back seat. And when he flips this up, he used to take all his friend's gear and everything from New York City to UB when he went to school. You can haul quite a bit of stuff with this. He said he never got stuck in a snow in Buffalo and it snows a lot there. And you can see, there's various things you can do with the four wheel drive system. This is why you like cloth seats. This is an 06, but they're still in excellent shape. And sure, we've got a little tent action going here with the headliner, but that's often what happens. You can have them done over if you don't want to act like you're in a tent, but your kids will love it. Kids right in here, they can pretend they're in a tent while they're going down the road. And we'll start her up, see what she sounds like. The Honda starts right off. Now, it didn't come with this vibrating seat, but <laughs> he added it in. You can hear it. He wants a little massage while he's going down the road. Not that bad of an idea. As you look under the hood, you get a lot of room. It opens up wide. Ultra reliable Honda. VTEC 3.5. They do have timing belts, as I say. You got to replace the timing belts every hundred thousand dollars. But they're pretty reliable vehicles. They share this engine with a lot of other Hondas. The pilots with these ridge lines, they share like 79% of the same parts. <laughs> they're basically taking the pilot. They made up the pickup truck out of it, and especially the later years. These earlier ones were made in Canada, but then the newer ones, the second generations, are made in the United States. They're very similar to the Pilots. Of course, the Pilots are an SUV, but they share the engines, they share all kinds of parts on it. They're not trying to compete with Ford F-150s, with GM Silverados, with Dodge Ram trucks. They're their own brand, they're a Honda pickup truck. Honda, of course, started with small cars. Small was always their thing. When they made their first big vehicles, they didn't even make them. They were just rebadged the Zuzus. <laughs> and they said Honda on the plastic, but they were completely a Zuzu made. And after a while, they gave up with them. And then they went to making actual pilots, making actual little pickups out of them, the ridge line. They really don't have anything to do with the Zuzus whatsoever. That was just Honda thought they needed something big, so they bought it from a Zuzu. And then they stopped the whole relationship and built their own, which are relatively bulletproof vehicles. Now he's the second owner of this ridge line. He bought it 15 years ago, and he now has 106,000 miles on it. And rightfully so, he wants to know. Should you get all the bodywork rust cut off, new metal put in, and repaint it and fix it because the price of the average new vehicle is now $45,000, or is it too far gone and he needs to get another vehicle? So we'll get out the old computer to check it out first. So we'll plug in a little scanner, start checking things out. Computer's looking all this stuff up. We'll take a look around. I really like the dash setup because I'm old <laughs> and it's huge. You see the tachometer, you see the speedometer, the mileage, the temperature gauge and the fuel. The main things you want to see, they're right out in the open. You can't miss them. And he's modernized. As you can see, he's got a backup camera that he hooked up to the thing. Going on the next scan, all systems. Here we go. It's going to check a lot of stuff. It'll take a little while. But he wants to know, is this thing worth putting a little money into, fixing it up, doing the body work, taking the rust off, or is it time to say goodbye? So, well, it goes through the 47 different systems that it's checking out. Now we're waiting high. The windows all still work. It's a Honda. The AC still works. And while we're waiting for the computer to do its thing, this particular model have a recall for sometimes the back frame gets rusty, the fuel tank can get loose and come off. It's a recall that you can take it to the Honda dealer, replace things that have totally rotten away. So if you're looking at one of these, get the VIN number. Go to the National Highway Traffic Safety.gov website, 
put in the VIN number, it's free, you can do it on your phone, and you'll see if it's one that's under the recall, or if you own one, take it in and see. They're going after them for rust problems in the back. You can see this has the fender rust problem. Particularly one didn't look bad. I whacked on a gas tank. It's not loose or anything, but it is a recall that you could take it in for. We're 15 out of 47, and so far there's a zero trouble codes. Now it's done all 47. Now it has found 12 trouble codes. Five of them are the body control module, and seven of them are the tire pressure monitoring system. Now a car that's old, I don't expect the tire pressure monitoring system to work. Get a tire pressure gauge, check your tires every once in a while because you got to buy all the sensors. The system itself can go out. It could cost a fortune. Tire gauges don't cost much. You can check it yourself. But we're going to look at the other codes first. We're going to look at the body control modules. We're going to diagnose. Typical communication is lost between modules. I see this all the time. Headlight switch parking, circuit position, malfunction, but the headlights work. Everything works. And in this case, it has an aftermarket radio in it. When you put them in, a lot of times that messes with the body control module. So we really don't care. He doesn't care. It has nothing to do with whether he's going to keep the vehicle or not. So we'll clear these. And the tire pressure monitoring, it's got codes for the sensors aren't working right. You don't care in an old car like this. You can blow all that stuff off. Just get a tire pressure gauge and measure your tires. You can't trust them when they get that old. You spend a fortune on just a stupid thing. They can easily check the tire pressure yourself. So I've cleared all the trouble codes now. They're done. We'll take it for a road test after we look at the main data of the engine. So start up. We can still got 117 bits of data. We'll start looking at stuff. It's color coded if it's off, we'll see. Fuel trim on bank two is 1.11. That's almost perfect. That's like 99%, which is pretty good for an old car. Look, the Lambda is 0 0.99. 1.00 is perfect, and it goes between 0 0.99 and perfect 1.00. Pretty good for a 16 year old vehicle now. See how efficient Hondas are. Charging system is even computer controlled on this old thing. You can see the alternator is doing 38%. Now we'll turn the headlights on, and look. It goes up to 42. That shows it's putting out more power when the headlights are on. It needs more power to charge. Gets you a little bit better gas mileage, that's all. More efficient system. It's not just a simple alternator does the charging. The computer controls the whole thing. So you thought, oh, it's a 16-year-old vehicle and it's not computerized. It's still real computerized, baby. <laughs> and you can see all the cylinders, no misfires, running perfectly. So let's take it for a spin. Here we go. And as you see the backup camera, he told me he added it in for 200 250 bucks at Best Buy because back in the day he said the Honda dealer wanted five grand for doing that. <laughs> it's a nice high up in the air truck. We got my big bump here and we don't really have to slow down. It's four wheel drive. Now being four wheel drive, he's got relatively aggressive tires. So if I shut up, you can hear the tires are humming a little bit. That's just typical. You're going to get that in any truck with aggressive tires. So let's see what this old girl can still do. We'll step on the gas. It's a Honda V6 engine. It's still got plenty of oomph left. The transmission shifting extremely smooth under high load. I gotta say, it's still in excellent shape. There's no arguing that. It takes the corners quite well. Interesting intersection. There's no stoplight anywhere. <laughs> this lead engine still solid as can be. Still an excellent truck. Hey, it's not competing with the big boys, but Honda didn't make it for that. It's still one of the most reliable pickup trucks out there. It's just that it's a Honda pickup truck. Not an extremely large one, but an extremely dependable one. Now, if you hit the brakes hard, the steering wheel shakes a little because the rotors are warped, but hey, it's just normal wear and tear. No odd noises. This thing's still in really good shape other than that superficial rust because back in the day, they didn't code them right. Older Hondas do have a tendency of rusting if you're in New York State. He was worried about the noise. And like I said, extremely aggressive tread pattern, right? It is four-wheel drive. You can take it in the snow and the mud. When you're on the regular highway, they tend to make a lot of noise because they're aggressive. They're biting in more. And that also will lead to a little bit lower gas mileage because since they're more aggressive, they put out more friction. Friction is loss of energy. So you get a little bit worse gas mileage too. But for an old vehicle, other than the rust on the side, this thing's still got an awful lot of life. They're not competing with the big boys with these pickup trucks. They're competing with somebody who wants smaller pickup truck with a lot of room inside that can last a really long time. And this one certainly has. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, 
Remember to ring that bell!